So you've been going through your bachelor's degree in computer science, or maybe you've done a boot camp, or you've just learned programming on your own. And it's finally come to the point where you feel like your skills are good enough and you've started looking, or maybe you've even already found your first junior position as a software engineer, or maybe your first internship. Now there's no way around it, your first job in software engineering is going to be something pretty daunting, but hopefully today I can help you out a little bit with that by giving you three tips that you should apply to your first job as a software engineer. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and if you want to see more content like this one, make sure to hit subscribe. Okay, so let's get right to it. Number one thing you should do is adjust the expectations you make for yourself and rethink of what the expectations other people have for yourself are too. Here's the thing, you've been preparing, you feel like you know your stuff, and you might feel really confident in your skills as a software developer at this point in time. And throughout your first couple days in an actual job, you'll come to realize that there's a lot of stuff, more than you thought so, that you don't actually know of at all. There might be things you've heard of, and there might be things you're confident with, but there's also going to be plenty of stuff that you've never heard of and you feel completely overwhelmed by. And that's completely normal. Software engineering as a whole is way too big of a topic to be able to learn everything before you get it thrown at you. The fact of the matter is, as a professional developer, what you're doing most of the time is figuring out stuff that you've never done before. Your job as a whole is not to know everything beforehand and be ready to tackle any type of situation without having to Google or search for anything. Your job is to be able to deconstruct problems until you can find a solution with what you already know and fill out the gaps with things you can look up online with the knowledge you already have. Most people, when they start their journey in software engineering and work on their first job, kind of end up hitting a wall because they feel like they should be knowing all this stuff. They start doubting themselves and think that maybe they weren't so prepared and maybe they're a little bit of an imposter at this point in time. And you hear that all the time, people thinking that they're not fit for the job they're doing when it comes to software development and software engineering. And it's that mindset that you have to try to avoid. Number one, the people around you, if they have any type of experience, don't expect you to know everything there is to know already. You'll come to understand and learn about all the things that you didn't know about before joining the team and eventually by putting in the time and learning about all these small details you'll eventually become as knowledgeable as the other people on your team about that subject. But from the beginning try to deconstruct that idea that you're supposed to already know everything there is to know about any type of subject. You're there to learn, just put in the hard work and you'll eventually feel a lot more comfortable about what you know already about a subject. Coming back to my first point, people around you will not expect you to know everything Thing there is to know about what you're working on or the platform or the project you're working on. But since everybody has such different backgrounds and such different knowledge when it comes to engineering whenever they enter a new job, they're not going to know what you already know either and so they're not going to be pushing to transfer knowledge to you all the time either. That means that whenever you don't know something and whenever you don't understand something, if it's absolutely beyond something that you can understand by yourself, make sure to ask questions about it to try to understand it better. Now that doesn't mean making people do the work for you and not putting in the time to research and try to understand things that you've never heard of before. But there's plenty of things and they will appear pretty obvious when you're actually working that could be explained in 30 seconds by someone in your team rather than you spend two hours trying to figure them out by yourself. Just don't be afraid of asking those questions and asking for help from your colleagues. It's always going to be in the benefit of the team to make sure you catch up as quickly as possible so that you can put in as much effort as you can and you know pull your own weight on the team. And the best way for that to happen is for you to ask questions when you truly don't have a quick way of learning about them and figuring them out. Just make sure every time you do so that you take notes and you make sure that you don't have to keep asking the same questions over and over again. But if that's not what you're doing and you're actually trying to put in the effort of trying to understand something, everybody on your team will feel perfectly fine answering those questions whenever you have them. Now remember, the whole idea of senior developers versus junior developers in software engineering comes down a lot lot more to acting as a mentor and a guide to other people on the team rather than just how good they are at programming. It's part of the task of a senior developer to make sure that they can onboard juniors and they can teach them so that they can better themselves as developers. But the fact of the matter is those people are there in some capacity to make sure that you can help the team even as a junior to the best of your abilities. 
Finally, number three is to take some initiative. As a new member on a team, especially as a junior or as an intern, it'll take a little bit of time before it ramps up to you having as much responsibilities as other people on the team. That means you won't have as many tasks as other people on your team and potentially a little bit more free time, if you will, during your work week. Just make sure you don't waste that time. If you're working on a big project, that means you have a lot of time where you can actually play around with the code and try to understand it a little bit Bit better. Now that doesn't mean reading mindlessly through lines and lines of code trying to understand. It means you have time to actually try around to implement bogus features just to see how the project reacts. It also means that you can spend time maybe shadowing one of the other person on your team to try to understand the project a little bit better and see what they are working on. Basically just be proactive with your time because you'll have a little bit more of it on your hands than when you're a little bit more integrated onto the team or when you're a little bit more of a senior developer. Like I said earlier, you're not expected to know everything beforehand, so make the most of the time you have to try to learn as much as you can and get up to speed with everybody else on your team. Because that's honestly the biggest thing that will make a good impression for you as a developer when you're either doing an internship or working as a junior. The best thing and the best quality you can show is the fact that you're trying to get better and try continuously to learn in your journey as a developer. It shows that whenever you're tasked with more complicated things, you'll still have the drive to try to understand them and you won't shut down because you don't know something already. Overall, just basically making you a more useful part of the team. So hopefully that little bit of insight was useful to you. If you have any questions or comment, make sure to leave them down below. I'll see you all in the next video and until then, take care.